Hello world, this is Random Fix and today we're going to be changing the rear end fluid on this 2004 Ford Mustang Mach 1 and this vehicle has a limited slip differential. I'll have a video link below on how you can tell if your vehicle has a limited slip differential. So we're going to be using this lube guard limited slip differential additive as well and I got the original gasket but if you don't have the original gasket you can go ahead and use RTV if appropriate by changing out the rear end fluid in the back of the vehicle you're going to extend the life of the differential as well as have just a better sounding rear end if you don't change the fluid on the rear end I have heard them hum and this is an indication that the rear end is wearing out so to prevent this always service the rear end according to your manufacturer's specified service interval so let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this I'm going to be lifting this vehicle up into the air And here's where my differential is located. This is going to be a rear wheel drive vehicle. So let's get this started. All right, so the first thing when you're actually changing the differential fluid on any vehicle, instead of removing the pumpkin from the front, what you want to do is find the fill port. And this is the fill port right here. And the way you get this off is you just use a regular 3 8 ratchet like that and the 3 8 ratchet inserts right into there. And once it's inserted you just want to make sure that it's loose. And I've already gotten mine loose. And then now what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and remove the front bolts off the pumpkin. Loosen up the bolts here. I'm going to go ahead and grab my oil drain pan here and my oil drain pan Underneath the differential, I'm going to go ahead and loosen all these up. Alright, so I got all the bolts removed off the pumpkin here, except for one. And I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the very last one. And then I'm going to use myself a pry tool. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and let this drain. And if yours has a gasket, go ahead and remove the gasket on mine. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and let this drain. And if yours has a gasket, go ahead and remove the gasket on mine. On mine, as you can see, they used some RTV. And now I'm going to go ahead and let this drain. All right, so this is the differential cover here. You can see there's a lot of nasty crud in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this out of here. And that's not always a good sign, but what you want to do is grab yourself some brake cleaner. And we're going to spray around this area really quick. And let that sit for a couple of seconds and what you want to do is grab yourself a knife or some kind of scraper and we're going to remove all this old RTV that was on this cover here. And this is pretty easy and it just takes a few minutes. Alright, so I got myself a little razor blade and I'm just going to use a razor blade to go ahead and pick this off. Whatever you can get with your hand. This is just coming right off here. And then for some of these other parts right here, just go ahead and grab that razor blade now. And this should just all just come off just like that. Alright, so whatever this is, this is not just RTV alone, because you got this great flu uh, compound right here, so it looks like they might have used some other sealant, but it's a little hard to remove. So what I did is I used a steel wire brush like that, it's just a brass one, and I just gently went around, cleaned it all up. I'm going to clean up the back side here. 
using that brake fluid. So I got that somewhat clean. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up the inside of this pretty well. Just spray. From the top down, go ahead and let that drip out. And just like the cover, you want to go through and clean all this RTV gasket maker that's on the bottom of here and all the way around. All right, so I got my brake cleaner here. I'm just going to go ahead and spray it around this. Try and get as much of that gunk I can get off. And I got a paper towel, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. All right, so my differential housing unit is nice and clean now. So to make a gasket around the pumpkin, you can use RTV gasket maker like this. They have this black one. They have this gray one here as well. Or you can get the actual gasket, which I got in this case. And this is the gasket actually in place. I haven't used anything to tack it down. But they make these really cool sprays that you can go spray down and put this on. It'll go ahead and hold it in place. So I got my gasket here. I'm just holding this in place. And I'm going to try to feed a couple of the bolts through that will this is centered and I'm not having my gasket walk all over the place as I'm installing it all right so what I did is I put two bolts in here and one down here and now I can go ahead and actually feel that the gasket is in place so I'm going to put a few more bolts in and make sure this is all lined up before I go ahead and tighten this down. And the whole key now is just to make sure you hand tighten everything. Don't use any power tools. Alright, so I got most of the bolts somewhat tied down. Now I'm going to go ahead and just tighten down everything. All right, just go ahead and make your last pass all the way around to make sure everything's signed up. All right, guys, one thing I wanted to cover with you guys was whenever you're using one of these fluid dispensers here, you actually want to make sure that you never cross-contaminate. So this is the one that I use for the GL5 fluid. I labeled it right there. This is the one that I use for my brake fluid right here. And then this is the one that I use for my transmission fluid. So I got my GL5 fluid right here, and I'm going to be adding that to my reservoir. This Mach 1 takes about 2.1 quarts, so I'm going to put about 2 quarts in here, and I'm going to go ahead and add my limited slip differential additive. So that's going to go in first. All right, so here's my limited slip differential additive, and I'm going to go ahead and pour that guy in here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in the two quarts. And it's got this nice handy measurement tool right on the side. All right, so with my fluid in there, I'm going to go ahead and just insert the quick release. And you want to make sure that the valve here is turned off. So the valve is off now. I'm going to go ahead and pressure that gauge up right there. And there we are. We're at the max setting. All right, so my fluid is all the way finished, and what you want to do is if it's not overflowing out of there, you want to go ahead and stick your finger in the fill port and make sure that you're able to feel some kind of fluid. And yep, I can feel fluid right there at the tip. So my differential is filled up properly. And one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that a lot of these fill and drain plugs on these vehicles they're actually magnetic so what you want to do is you want to make sure you clean these off really well before you stick them back in the car alright so there it goes it's all cleaned up now now this will have no problem with tracking little pieces of metal that are supposed to grab now I'm going to go ahead and reinsert my fill plug There you go. Right, now it's time to go ahead and take it off the jack stand. So I got my floor jack in place. 
All right, guys, there you guys go. We got the limited slip additive in there. We changed the differential fluid on this Mustang here. And the car is driving a little bit better. There's a little bit less rear end noise. And I hope you guys really like this video. If this is the first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing for more time and money saving videos just like this. And hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Have a great day. You know if you guys have any comments hit the subscribe button and i really appreciate your continued support